<laughs> well, that was good, because if I'd introduced myself, it would be this glowing report that would probably take up 20 minutes of my <laughs> talk, so now I'm introduced. Um, this will, to begin with, a couple of announcements. One that Shock should have made, but he was so greedy for time that he didn't talk about it, so now I have to. <laughs> Um, and that is that the long-awaited GEO panel that we've been talking about for four or five years, uh, we are now actively pursuing. This has not taken place. Everyone says, why, why don't those guys let you in with your geologist? For a change, it's not the Egyptologist's fault. It's ours. And specifically, mine, because I'm one of these rare people born with not just one but two Achilles heels, and both of them are organization. So we have... <laughs> We have managed not to get this thing off the ground, but now we are really actively pursuing it. Shock and I have put the language together um, to go after. I think some, not, maybe not all of you know this, what we want to do, and we, we have a verbal, um, a verbal agreement with Zahi Hawass, who as may, many of you may know, but some of you may not know, I now have but through a remarkable, almost, I mean, miracles do happen, and we are now um, on, on quite good, even better than amiable personal terms. He still trashes everything alternative in public, but on a personal level, we're, we're getting on quite well. And in fact, recently he was in Sedona with a person who does, um, my friend who does my trips for me, Mohammed Nazmi. And I got a call from Mohammed saying, got to call Zahi quick. He wants to invite you personally to this big party that they're having with the Metropolitan Museum of Art when they're opening up this new Luxor Museum. So I will be there next week, personally invited by Zahi Hawass. And there will be there. <laughs> this should be a lot of fun because it's going to be filled with the rich sponsors of the Met who are you know, who are there on the special thing with a private viewing and all the rest. But there will certainly be a few quackademic Egyptologists there <coughs> who are going to say, I hope, and say, what the hell are you doing here? And, and I will say with a big smile, oh, Sahi invited me, of course. <laughs> so we'll see. But the GEO panel is serious business, and we are going to put the ideas that we have Three or four, depending upon what the budget will handle. Um, geologists who are either openly on our side or open to it. And three or four chosen by Zahi or whoever he delegates who are committed against it to spend 12 days, two weeks, mainly on the Giza Plateau, but also Dashur and Saqqara. And geologists move as slowly as mountains, so it's going to take two weeks to go through every point and every bit of the evidence that Shock was showing you yesterday, and then do reports, and then call a press conference, and if the, if the outcome is as unconditionally positive as we expect it to be, that jump starts the whole process of the quest for the lost civilization, because the Sphinx is not the most important piece, I mean, it's one of the most important pieces of evidence, but the things that you've been hearing over yesterday, for example, there's plenty of other <coughs> solid evidence attesting to what, to a lost civilization that went down. But the Sphinx, anybody can understand. It's a no-brainer. Our mystery of the Sphinx is shown in schools by, by teachers to you know, sixth graders and seventh graders, and they get it. Um, Egypt, Egyptologists and archaeologists don't get it, but the kids do. <laughs> so, so getting this panel off the ground is of, of paramount importance. And now that I've got you all in this room, Chuck and I discussed, if any of you know, any of you have academic credentials, any of you have a, a geologist in the family with the right kind of credentials, or a friend who has a friend who has a friend who knows um, a, a geologist who might be interested in, in, um, in joining us, um, pass the word around and they can get hold of us through my website or Shocks or something like that. We're opening this up. We'll be putting ads in the geological journals. We'll be putting notices up on our websites, on Graham's, on Roberts, on Daily Grail. So we're really pursuing this in a, in a big time way now. We're going to go get it. And 
Second thing is, uh, some of you may or may not know that I have a nonprofit foundation called the Ancient Wisdom Foundation, which is always looking for a friendly billionaire to <coughs> sort of put up some of what I call wolf repellent, which makes greases the wheels so that life can go on. Third thing is, as you know, I do my trips, and I have, I have them planned for the next one, actually starts October 23rd, but there is room on it. If anybody wants to jump up right now and write out a check, I can get you on that one. Otherwise, December, January, February, there are trips. Um, if you haven't seen Egypt through symbolist eyes, even if you've been there, you really haven't seen it at all. And um, I'm getting on. I mean, as long as I can climb up the Red Pyramid, I'll keep doing them. But the situation in the Mideast is such that who knows, and my feeling is that if you're going to go, you better do it sometime fairly soon while the getting's good, because I don't trust the situation. When you get to Egypt itself, I mean, you don't feel dangerous. You get there two days, and unless you've got CNN on, you say, this is the safest place I've ever been in. I feel much safer than I do walking around in Los Angeles. But anyway, so those are the, those are the three announcements. Now, with this talk, I'm going to start, I hope, I can manage to keep to the schedule. Uh, the first 20 minutes or so, symbolist Egypt, shock handled all of the geology, and so I don't have to go into that now. Here's our picture of the Sphinx, which anchors the whole, let's say, the whole quest for the ancient civilization. Um, but it's the, it's the doctrine that is associated with it that, that establishes the importance of it, because if it's just an old ancient civilization that died, it's a curiosity. If that ancient civilization has enshrines a doctrine that is of immediate consequence to us as living human beings in the 21st century, that's another matter altogether. And I share Graham's and I guess most of the other um, presenters' views of our contem contemporary society, which I regard as a an absolute madhouse and in, in steep decline. And as far as I'm concerned, Western civilization is probably the, the worst catastrophe to hit the human race since monogamy. And, <laughs> and, and um, it, is a, it is a morass, but and getting out of it, this will be the second part of the talk, it, the only way out of it, I mean, nobody's going to stop global warming. Nobody's going to produce a popular, to bring down the population from the crowded, from the six billion that it is now. Nobody's going to do any of these things uh, physically, probably. Um, or nobody's even going to realize, or not enough people are going to realize that it has to be done before it's too late. But it can be approached through ideas. I'll get into this later. First, I'll talk about symbolist Egypt itself, uh, concentrating or emphasizing the, the, the doctrine itself and the cosmological aspects of it. And then we'll do a quick run through of Egypt itself, because that's, that's probably the only civilization where we talk about, we've talked about a few of the presenters, the Kali Yuga, the Yuga cycle. The, 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 that, that it's a progression, that it is a cycle that goes, that goes like this, up and down. And for the most part, it's hard to appreciate that visually, even textually. And it's, you know, it gets a, it's a very complicated subject. But when you go through Egypt from beginning to end, and let's say the Sphinx here, this is the beginning, way, 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 way back. Oh, yeah. I'll uh, interrupt myself for a second here. Graham was talking about this 10,500 date, Robert also, um, because that's a Leo marker. We've had this discussion a lot, but I'd just like to say, rather, and I won't go into the documentation, but the Egyptian texts have this documentation, that I think even 10,500 is too early. This big catastrophe hits about 12,000, whatever it is, 12,000, 11,500 BC, the comet strike or whatever it is, Ice Age comes to an end, all the all the, um, the, the quaternary extinctions, all the woolly mammoths and the, and, the, and the rhinoceroses and all the huge land mammals die. There's chaos all over the earth, and this is around that 10,500 
date. So I don't.